Inside the Lines is brought to you by Hendrick Honda of Charleston. When you buy a new or pre-owned vehicle, our Advantage program takes care of you for life. Make Hendrick Honda of Charleston your first choice for your next vehicle. Visit their showroom at 1478 Savannah Highway in Charleston or online at charlestonhonda.com. Welcome to Inside the Lines here on CFCSports.com, brought to you each week by Hendrick Honda over on Savannah Highway. I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for tuning in as we come to you today inside TD Arena in front of the Women's Tennis Mural inside the arena here and also the men's tennis mural as well. And speaking of tennis, we will start with women's tennis. Congratulations to Angelo and Astapulo and his team again after winning their fifth straight Southern Conference title. They're off to the NCAA tournament and they just found out on Tuesday that they will be playing in the Texas Tech Regional. Got a chance to catch up with the team as they preview the upcoming NCAA tournament appearance. We're thrilled to be in the tournament and, and to see our name pop up there playing Texas Tech in Lubbock. You know, what, what a thrill. We don't know a thing about them. We, we've, we do have a common opponent in two common opponents in Wisconsin and Kansas. That they did beat both of them, although we beat both of them too. So we're, we're anxious to get there. It'll be nice having Duke, a team that we know very well there. And uh, Coach Jamie will be there. So he's a good friend of mine. And uh, so it, it's. it's First time in Texas, first flying trip for the Cougars, so we're certainly very excited. Uh, I don't know anything about Texas Tech at all, so this is kind of cool. Uh, a lot of the girls have never been to Texas. I haven't ever been to Texas Tech. No one on the team's been to Texas Tech. From what we hear, they're mostly foreigners, uh, but we're really excited. It's going to be the first time I think the team gets to take a plane, which is kind of cool. Uh, but. You know, it's actually, we think it's a doable match. Uh, we'll see, you know, we're excited. We had a lot of injuries and for us to come through in the end and, and win the fifth consecutive and go out of the Southern Conference on that streak is, is really a proud accomplishment for the whole athletic department. So we're certainly proud about that. You know, now it's time for us to make a little noise in the NCAA tournament. You know, this will be our sixth trip overall. That's, yeah, that's right. Six trip overall. So, you know, we, we know a little bit what to expect, although we don't know much about this opponent, but we're going to go out there and give it everything we have. Again, congratulations to Angelo and the tennis team as they will head off to the Texas Tech Regional in the NCAA tournament. Now, speaking of NCAA tournament appearances, congratulations to Mark McIntyre, the head coach of the men's golf team here at the College of Charleston, and his freshman, Josh Lorenzetti. Josh, of course, as many of you know by now, became the first ever freshman here at CFC to win the individual Southern Conference Championship. Got a chance to catch up with Josh and his head coach as they preview the NCAA tournament on the golf side. Come on up here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, coming in, I kind of had some really high expectations of myself, and that first tournament that I played in kind of really brought me back down to earth, and I uh, had to work really hard, and, and now looking back after winning Southern Conference, uh, it's been a really successful, se se successful year, been both at the bottom and, and now kind of you know, towards the top. The thing that Josh did a really, really good job of is starting in the spring, um, he evaluated what he did, did not do well in the fall and um, worked on that in the off season and in the spring was open to uh, coaching and as a coach it's nice when you have players that want your help uh, that value your opinion and um, on the sixth hole in the first round of our tournament at Stono Ferry is where Josh made the turn for the better and um, ever since then he's been a rock star I think his stroke average is probably under 72 uh, he's moved up a thousand points in the world golf rankings um, he's currently ranked in the top 150 in college golf. So as a freshman, I think that that's pretty good. Um, did it surprise me that he won the conference championship? No, I think he's a great player. I think he's a tremendous player. Um, and now that he's starting to do those things, and start, his course management is improving, his short game is improving, um, I think he could be one of the best players in the country. With uh, the, the um, competitive schedule that we play, uh, being able to see some of the top teams in the country, uh, you know, playing those tournaments, and then you finally like, you get to see what the the best players uh, in the nation do, and uh, and then you just kind of then going into the Southern Conference. I mean, there's still some great players, but you know, I just felt a lot more comfortable being around like having been around some of the best players and and going in with. Uh, a lot more confidence that I can play with these guys. Again, congratulations to Josh as he becomes the first ever freshman here at the College of Charleston to win the individual Southern Conference Championship. Stay tuned to Inside the Lines here on CFCSports.com. We'll be following his journey starting here in a couple weeks in the NCAA tournament. We'll stay with golf, switch from the men's side over to the women's side. They did not win the Southern Conference Championship, but came very close 
including Mary Chandler Bryant, who finishes second in a playoff in the Southern Conference Championship. Got a chance to catch up with her. Um, well, I was kind of at the bottom of the totem pole, and I really had to work hard to get in the lineup. I guess I struggled in the beginning and because all the freshmen coming in were really good and talented girls, so I think we all really pushed each other and had to work extremely hard to be able to play. Well, the whole year I felt like I was so close to playing well, and so I came into this tournament thinking that I was extremely close and this was the time where I could play well and the first day didn't I went out and I played a, I played it good and then the next day I guess I just finally put it all together and made some putts and was there mentally didn't have any mess ups major mess ups and it really was better than the whole season I put it all together finally We'll take a break. When we come back, still a lot to talk about. We'll talk about baseball and softball. Both teams will be on the road coming up this weekend as they are on the home stretch of their seasons. We'll take a break and back with more right after this here on Inside the Lines. At Hendrick Honda of Charleston, you get our best price every day. When you buy a new or pre-owned vehicle, our Advantage program takes care of you for life. We offer a lifetime powertrain limited warranty, free towing and shuttle service, complimentary loaner cars, and paintless dent repair. Make Hendrick Honda of Charleston your first choice for your next vehicle. Visit us today at 1478 Savannah Highway in Charleston or online at charlestonhonda.com. Welcome back to Inside the Lines. As always, each week presented by Hendrick Honda over on Savannah Highway. Thanks for tuning in here on CFCSports.com. We'll switch over to baseball and softball now. Big weekend series coming up for the baseball team. Coming off of a series against Radford where they won two of three. Here are the latest Southern Conference standings. There you see in first place, Western Carolina still cruising right now at 18 and 6. 30 and 17 overall, followed by the Citadel. Citadel still has been on fire as of late. They're 14 and 7 now in SoCon play. 27 and 18 overall. Elon in third place at 15 and 9. At an even 500 overall, though 23 and 23. And the College of Charleston right now in fourth place at 12 and 8. 24 wins overall. They'll be taking on Wofford this season. There you see in the standings, Wofford right now. 9 and 15 in Southern Conference play. 18 and 28. Overall, speaking of Wofford, here is the statistical comparison between the Cougars and the Terriers. Look at the batting average for Charleston on the rise, hitting 270 now as a team, still averaging about six and a half runs per game, and now home runs up to 26 on the season. Obviously, a big series this weekend. Well, I mean, they do a lot of things well. They've got a number of of arms that are very good. Um, they seem to uh, just go crazy on the base pass. I mean, they run a lot, and that's kind of their deal. And I give them credit for sticking to what they, you know, what they try to do when it comes to uh, their identity as an offense. They're going to get on base, and they're just going to run and run and run and run and run. And, uh, you know, regardless of the score or the situation, those guys are going to be aggressive. So put some pressure on your team. You know, you got to hold the running game pretty well, and your catcher's got to be ready to, to throw and got to be accurate. So. And, and anytime you play on the road, it's, it's going to be a test for you. Uh, you're going to play in a park that your guys play in once every other year, and they play in it every single day in practice and 30 plus games a year in the season. So it's it's not easy anytime you go on the road. But we got to play well. We need to finish well down the stretch here to put ourselves in a good position going into the tournament. Um, we have to we have to just compete really hard. Um, come out and you know we got to starts Friday night and we got to pitch well and we got to hit well. And, um, you know, we've been playing good defense, um, and I think we just need to come out, find a way uh, to get three wins this weekend. We've had a few close games get away from us, slip away from us, and uh, so now it's, you know, get, get, we have, what, three series left, three weekends left, and they're, they're very important to us uh, as to where we finish in the conference as we're striving to finish first. Uh, every game will be important. We need to win each uh, each of the last three series and uh, just going in trying to get game one on Friday night. We've had problem, we've struggled doing that lately or the whole season and I think that that's the that'll probably be the biggest thing and the biggest you know mentality wise that's what we got to have is get game one out of the way and get that win. 
We'll switch from baseball over to softball. Shelly Horner and the girls have been on a terrific run as of late. They had won 11 straight games going into their series last weekend against Western Carolina. They won the first two, so they had won 13 consecutive games. Unfortunately, lost in that series finale, but still winning 13 of the last 14. Not too bad. Here is the Southern Conference standings on the softball side. In first place, Appalachian State at 16 and 5, 27 and 18 overall. College of Charleston are right behind them at 13 and 7 in second place and 30. Two and 17. Georgia Southern right now in third place, followed by Chattanooga, UNCG, Furman, Western Carolina, Sanford, and Elon. This weekend against UNCG, the Spartans 11 and 9 in Southern Conference play, 34 and 16. And here is the comparison between the Cougars and the Spartans. UNCG, really despite their 11 and 9 record, and the fact that they uh, are 34 and 16 on the season, not surprising, hitting 303 as a team, over five runs per game. But Shelley and the girls obviously right there as well, hitting 282 as a team, four and a half runs per game. 31 home runs and a team ERA of 2.82 and another big series for the softball team this weekend against UNCG. Better to, to lose a game you know, now than obviously when it, when it matters in the tournament because the tournament is what really matters for us and we've got to win the tournament in order to get a postseason berth. So, um, you know, it was, it was upsetting obviously. Um, the team took it very hard, which, you know, I liked from them because it just means that, you know, how passionate they are about our game and about our team. Um, we will definitely bounce back. Obviously, practice has been good. We've got a good, you know, few days of practice ahead of us, and um, we'll definitely bounce back. And you know, short-term memory. You know, what happened. We learned from, you know, the the mishaps that that did happen on Sunday. Um, you know, but we bounce back. Um, the team's resilient, and I'm excited about that. And we've got just such a good attitude, and we're looking forward to going into Greensboro. Um, obviously, Greensboro's you know, a, a tough team and they're playing very well right now. We've got to, again, bring our A game, which I say every week that we've got to bring our A game, but this conference is just so competitive on a, on a weekly basis. And I think that it's important for us to realize, I do think this team is realized. And so I think that's why the, the loss really hurt us. Um, it stung and because they, the team knows that how important it is to, to win every game. That'll wrap things up for this week's episode of Inside the Lines here on cfcsports.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. We're brought to you by Hendrick Honda over on Savannah Highway. Stay tuned next week, and for the weeks to come, we'll still be on the air here with our weekly shows for about another four or five weeks to follow all these teams throughout the Southern Conference Championships. And also good luck to women's tennis and also, of course, to Josh Lorenzetti on the men's golf side as well. Thanks for tuning in. Again, we'll talk to you next week right here on Inside the Lines.